four movements that occur at the shoulder girdle. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video I'm going to explore the movements of the shoulder girdle and there are four of them, but I'm also going to explain the importance of why you need to know this. So first of all, the reason you need to know it is if you're working towards your level two anatomy or level three anatomy exam, you can expect between three and eight questions all around the upper body joints, including the shoulder girdle. So this includes things about knowing about the type of joint, the actions of the joint, and understanding that the shoulder girdle is different from the shoulder joint itself. The other reason why this is really important to know is that when it comes to training clients, you need to be able to see where they're moving and appreciate that there's a difference between movement that occurs at the shoulder girdle compared to movement that might occur at the shoulder joint. So let's have a dive into the difference between these to start off with. The shoulder joint happens here at the glenohumeral joint. This is this ball and socket joint where your humerus is moving within it. Now I've done another video of this and the link is available with this video for you to go and check that one out if you haven't already. And that really clarifies all nine movements that can occur at that shoulder joint. However, we're talking about the shoulder girdle. Now, the nice thing about the shoulder girdle is you can actually see a lot of the movements that happen here just by looking at the back of your client because it involves the scapula and the clavicle. And they're the two components, the two bones that make up the shoulder girdle. And obviously you've got a right side and a left side as part of that. So this movements of the shoulder girdle are really important when you're sort of analysing how the client is moving. And we're going to explore just the four movements that happen here in the shoulder girdle, just the scapula and the clavicle, and not look at the shoulder joint itself. That's in a different video. So let's have a look at these different movements. First of all, we've got elevation. So elevation is where the whole shoulder girdle, so the scapula, drive upwards towards the ears. It's like they're on an elevator, they elevate up. And we've got different muscles that help us to do this, like our upper trapezius and our levator scapula. The clue is in the title for that one, levator equals elevate. So we're elevating and then the opposite to that is depression of the shoulder girdle. So depression of the shoulder girdle is that pushing the shoulder blades down almost like you've got your shoulder blades and you want to put them in your back pockets of your back jean pockets. You just feel them dropping down the back of the body and that's quite often a cue you might use with your clients of like imagine your shoulder blades dropping into your back jeans pocket and that's a really nice external cue to get them to depress the shoulder blades now this one is primarily achieved through using the lower fibers of the trapezius then we're going to look at the two other actions now these are protraction and retraction of the shoulder blades now retraction of the shoulder blades is whereby you're squeezing your shoulder blades together at the back, almost like you want to crack a walnut between them at the back. And you might use this as a cue point when your clients are doing a row, for example, like a seated row, where they're squeezing backwards and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now that's a retraction of the shoulder girdle. However, protraction is the opposite, where we're literally taking the shoulder blades as far apart as we can and almost rolling forwards um, by the shoulders. So that is elevation, depression, protraction, and retraction. Now let's think about where we might see this in with our clients. So I just want to take the example of a press up to start off with. If you've got a client doing a press up and you're analyzing them, you're looking at how they're moving, there's two different ways they could be moving. One is correct, one is less correct. So the first way is that if your client is in a press up and they lower themselves down, you'll notice that their shoulder blades should squeeze together in the lowering phase. So retraction of the shoulder blades or the shoulder girdle happens in the lowering phase of that press up. And then when we press forward, we start activating our chest muscles as we protract the shoulder blades on the lifting phase. Um, and that's really important to look for because if your client isn't moving their shoulder blades much in their press up, then the chances are they're just moving the glenohumeral joint here in the shoulder joint. Now that's okay, but it's gonna put a lot of pressure on the stabilizing muscles of your rotator cuff muscles that cross the shoulder. And also it doesn't target the main big muscles that we were looking for in the action of the press up, which is why it's so important that when you look at a client, 
you know which joint you're expecting to move and how much you're expecting it to move by. And I think that press up is a really great example of understanding how the shoulder girdle works differently to the shoulder joint in the movement. So now that you've learned all four movements that are associated with the shoulder girdle, um, you can test your knowledge by literally looking down below this if you're watching on the blog or clicking the link that is with this video and you will see three different mock questions to test your knowledge and understand how the shoulder girdle works. Now, if you haven't already been and checked out the nine joint actions that occur at the shoulder joint, then you can go and check that video here as well um, and make sure you check that out and understand those different nine, very different to the four we've just discussed. If you are looking for more mock questions and to really test your knowledge and make sure you're ready for your level two anatomy and level three anatomy exams, then please do check out the mock questions as well. You can download hundreds of those on the link that is with this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and the like button, then please do. And I will see you on the next video. Take care.